a couple of big games tonight. You might have uh, heard about this. Liverpool against Napoli is obviously one of them. Uh, there's also a big game at the New Camp where it's Barcelona against Spurs. Graham Hunter is on the line for us this morning. Graham, good morning to you. Hi, Jar. So, the New Camp first, right? Um, Pochettino says it's possible. Of course it's possible, but is it really possible? What do you think? Look, I think if uh, Girona came to the stadium and uh, got a draw, then Spurs are eminently capable of matching that. Um, first of all, let's look at Barca's team chair, because there's no question that the way in which Barca have been defending this season would lend itself to a good Harry Kane night. Is he going to be up against PK? Possibly not. Um, will the defence, which is obviously a little bit cobbled together, they're missing so many players, Spurs, are they going to be facing another bromance, Suarez and Messi? No, I think Suarez will be rested. Um, there'll be changes in midfield. Probably Rakitic won't play. I think there's a reasonable chance that a Dutch backup keeper, Sillison, replaces Stegen. But on top of all that, I'm going to tell you that it's true that Valverde and Messi, coach, best player, will, will go to this game looking to win. They won't be doing any favours to anybody. They will definitely try and beat Spurs. Where the debate lies is if you change this Barca team, if you take some of the quality out, are, <clears throat> are the backup players ready to beat Pochettino's guys? So I would say it's going to be a more even playing field than you would have expected. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm curious. In, in previous seasons, obviously, when Barcelona have been already through, <coughs> sometimes these performances end up being routine four or five nil wins where they're just celebrating and it's like a very relaxed, good crack kind of performance where they, they take their time, they play good football and it's... It's all rosy for them. Then there are other times when it's not that they phone it in, but like it's natural that they have already qualified. There's no first or second seeding at risk. It's it's a risk free environment for them, and they do have a long hard season ahead of themselves. So I, I'm not sure, but um, I can't off the top of my head recall. There have been some times when they've lost some of these games where it's been uh, an unexpected result from their perspective. Look, definitely, Shakhtar Donetsk would be one. Um, there are group games where they've played nothing but kids. Um, in the sixth match. Your memory's right. Um, it's about 27, 28 Champions League games since they lost at the camp now. Um, and beyond that, although I'm proposing that it won't be the top 11, and it, and it won't be tonight, what you have to bear in mind is that this is a club with a, a rock-hard mentality, the type of mentality that Spurs are still trying to breed. I'm not saying Messi wins this on his own, but all of you there know that if Messi has the kind of night against Spurs that he did against Espanyol, say, or against PSV, um, then Spurs lose. It's as simple as that. He's that good. He's that in form. This tournament matters so much to him. This is their number one priority by a long way. I haven't heard anybody at the club, Messi included, speak about the Champions League in this way since they won the treble in 2015. And therefore, that point about dialing it in, Barca when they're beaten, they're usually beaten by a side that's physically stronger than them, fitter than them, and plays at a higher rate. And it's usually in March or April. Right now, they don't know how to take their foot off the pedal. They will play to win. If it clicks with Messi, and it depends how Valverde replaces um, Suarez, it's likely, but not guaranteed, that up front you'll have Coutinho shuttling between midfield and the left, and Dembele on the right with Messi, false nine. It's, it's not as strong without Suarez. That partnership is brilliant. Suarez, in fact, is the best partner on the pitch Messi's ever had. So, Jar, what Spurs have got is an opportunity to try and take advantage of the quality absences. But they must treat this. They must believe that Barca's going into it as if it were a cup final because that's the attitude you're going to get from the Spanish champions. Guaranteed. Graham, this is the first time we've had you on since Pele made those remarks about Messi last week regarding uh, being a player that he's got one skill and can't head the ball, which is kind of unusual given he's been pretty high in terms of praising him in the past. Is that the sort of stuff that traditionally gets to Lionel Messi, especially if it's coming from someone like Pele? He is um, <clears throat> he's almost immune to hearing that kind of stuff. Um, he doesn't involve himself in uh, the media, social media. He's not one of these guys who feeds off that deliberately, finds people putting him down and uses it as a stimulus. He's an odd beast in that I, I've never met a footballer exactly like him, never mind talent um, before in my career. Um, when it reaches him, though, yeah, if it come, if 
wor derogatory words like that reach him, then it can be an extra stimulus. But is he the type of guy that I could guarantee you knows about it? And does he have the teammates around it? Because you all know in all sports, a dressing room can be, um, if not a cruel place, a place where teammates will deliberately seed that into somebody's ear and say, look at this guy or this woman's been saying about you. That's not the teammates he's got around him. The the one that probably stung more than Pelé, because, and he fully knows about it, is the way in which um, fellow pros um, or journalists categorised him as fifth best in the Ballon d'Or. He doesn't live to win that award, but he knows where he's at in the food chain in, in football, and it's not fifth. And the combination of him having had a poor World Cup in his country, um, not having won the Champions League last season, being determined to win it, being captain, being informed, being happy, means that we're we're in the middle of uh, a vintage season, a vintage year too. In it, nobody scored more goals this year. Nobody's created more assists. Nobody scored more free kick goals this year. Spurs are in danger. Um, but had Pele not said these inane, stupid, regrettable words, you'd be getting this pretty much the same version of Leo Messi tonight. That's that's a fact. Fair play. Graham, um, we'll let you go. Just one quick question about the um, the Liverpool Napoli game. What do you think is actually going to happen here? I genuinely believe that Liverpool have got the the know how, the football. Um, I, I guess some people who aren't Liverpool fans might be rejecting the whole big night at Anfield idea, but it matters. It's not as if Napoli don't play in torrid atmospheres in other places. Um, but I think that's one step forward for Liverpool. Anfield will try and pull them over the line. Secondly. I genuinely believe that although Napoli are well coached, very quick on the break, technically excellent, I think Liverpool are better. And I think that they'll show it. And also I think the motivation of putting right what they feel the wrongs of the Kiev final. I spent time with Milner a couple of weeks ago. He was talking passionately at Melwood about the idea of going one step further, of um, erasing the feeling of uh, hurt is, is the right word that he used from Kiev. And again, that's not strategy. That's not talent. That's another factor that might get them over the line. But I genuinely think that um, on form, um, they'll be able to defend and break against Napoli and win. I, th I think it's a Liverpool victory. Um, I'm literally James Milner's biggest fan uh, and have been for a long time, um, basically since he was at Villa and realised exactly the impact that he could have on matches, on the culture, on the people around him. Um, and it strikes me, now that you've mentioned it, he, he's clearly manager material. Is he interested in coaching? Is he interested in management? Is that something that came up in your conversation? Yeah, we talked a little bit about that. Um, and he is still determined to play for a very long time. Um, if I had my bet, I think that Liverpool's offer to him will be tempting uh, to stay. He's already, um, his ears are ringing with people saying, don't you want to go back to Leeds? Look at how Bielsa's got them playing. Wouldn't that be a perfect end to your career? So the coaching idea um, is definitely within this framework. But the two things that stand out, three things. One, he told me that he's absolutely loving everything about his football career. Not just the playing, not just the wages, not just the possibility of trophies. He's one of these guys that thrives. This, the day we saw him, it was brutally cold and windy. They were doing a double session and he was loving it. Lapping training up. That's a key factor, you know. And when anybody at the top level says, oh, I really don't fancy this pre-season, or I'm not going out there that rainy Tuesday afternoon to train, that's not James Miller. Secondly, I think he's still playing very, very well. And thirdly, the, the hunger to keep on playing, to keep on performing, is definitely still there. So he believes he's got, I, I, he, we didn't put a figure on it, but his appetite for remaining at the top in football as a player <clears throat> talks about another four or five years. So his decision about coaching um, will come in due course but from what we talked about from his understanding of a group mentality uh, as in leading a group of players um, his understanding of football it's all there I think it will happen as you predicted but I still think Jared, honestly it's a long way off Yeah, Graham, good stuff thanks a million for joining us enjoy the game this evening